Here's how I 3D kitbashed a renegade chaos spawn. As always, the first step is looking up images to find some inspiration. Mammoth Factory Games sent me some cool minis, so I started there. I settled on this cool serpent and thought it would fit very nicely into my swampy renegade army. I imported the serpent file, right clicked, and set the geometry to origin. I wanted to cut off some of the serpent body to make the new upper body more upright, sort of mermaid style. Merman! After pressing shift plus A, I selected a box mesh and used it as a cutting tool. I wanted to separate the part I wanted from the part that I didn't. I created a thin box, slicing the piece in two. I have a tutorial on how to use the box mesh if you're interested. Basically, I found it easier to cut off what I don't want by making a small slice between the two parts, making a gap between them so they're no longer touching each other. You can now either delete the part you don't need or save it for later. The separated parts are technically part of the same object still. To really separate them, select the object, go into edit mode, and with everything selected, press P. Select separate by loose parts. Voila, two separate parts. Wow. You may need to set their origin again. Now that I have the bottom half of the mini ready, it's time to add the human side of the spawn. I imported a mini that I already kitbashed and took the torso and the head. The torso was made by various makers called bits and the head is from St. Decent, with random antlers I found clipped in. My initial idea was to cover up the awful transition with texture paste. However, I had the leftover serpent bit, so I figured I might as well use it. The curved part of the bottom would help make the transition look smooth. I rotated, scaled, and then moved it into place. In game, Chaos Spawn used claws and other savage close range weapons. Throughout the project, I kept looking up images for inspiration. So I went back online and looked for parts that would fit. I imported the new arms and moved them into place. The scythe arm I imported was originally a right arm, but was made a left arm by setting the X scale to negative 1. I also wanted to change the type of horns on the spawn's helmet, because I didn't want it to be the same as the other mini I kitbashed. So I went into Thingiverse and found something I liked. The horns are slightly too large, so I scaled them down. After they were roughly in place, I selected the object, went into edit mode, pressed P, and separated by loose parts as we've done before. I then rotated the horn separately into a more natural position. And with that, the heavy lifting of the kit bash was done. For some reason, I thought this would be a good time to test out new support settings, and I didn't have enough supports on the scythe arm and the claw arm. The claw is missing a few fingers, and one of his fingers turned out flat. I can cover this print failure up with some texture paste and make it look all rusted. But the scythe arm would take a little bit more than texture paste to fix. Luckily, I used some of the same scythe arms in a previous kit bash. Let that be a reminder to all of you not to throw away usable prints. Just add them to your bits box instead. So I snipped off the failed arm and cut the new arm at an appropriate spot. Since there wasn't a good enough contact point for glue, I decided to roll a little ball of green stuff and glue it on that way. 
Then I used a hobby knife dipped in water to make the green stuff look more natural. Green stuffing objects together also has the added benefit of giving you a little bit of time to fine tune the pose. The green stuff will hold everything together while it cures. I think it's time to make this thing look swampy. Let's go to the icky finicky swamp. As always we'll use our old friends texture paste, static grass, and cork for this. The gang's all here. I glued a little disc of cork onto the bottom of the mini to give it a little height. Then I covered the base with texture paste so it isn't just a flat surface. I tried covering some areas more than others. Dabbing a paper towel around to quickly cover large surfaces works well and creates a thin random layer. Next, I glued the mini onto the base. I made sure to leave a little of the base exposed because texture paste and super glue have a weird chemical reaction or something and I wanted a strong bond. I'm not too worried about blending the bottom into the ground, since I'm planning on filling the base with resin later. Now I'm going to cover up some of the print failures and add more texture to the mini. I added a healthy amount of texture paste onto the claw arm to help cover up the fact that it was missing a finger. You can go as heavy or light with this step depending on how grungy you want your dudes. I wanted the base to be a little bit more visually pleasing. So I went into my box of sticks and roots and picked out an interesting looking one. Then I played around and found a good spot. I didn't want to block the mini, just add some interest. Adding static grass tufts is the next step. There isn't a science to this, just add them wherever it looks good. Don't forget you can always cut the grass to make it look less classic tuft like. I'm also very inspired by Turnip 28 and how all the minis have roots and tufts growing out of them, so I added a little grass tuft growing out of the spawn's back. Very cool. And that's it. As always, these swampy turnip kit bashes look like a dropped lollipop before priming. And I'm very happy with how it turned out. Big shout out to Mammoth Factory Games for supplying the serpent model. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe. Comment down below with any feedback or ideas or questions. Alright, bye bye!